Hey Pythonistas, welcome back to another in the series on Fluent Python. Today we'll be starting chapter three, which is about the essential data type, uh, the dictionary. It's not only used widely in all of your, typically all of your Python programs, but also in the Python implementation itself. So stick around and we are going to dive back in to Fluent Python. As usual, I'm here in my IPython terminal. Let me zoom in on this for you. Um, and so let's start with how to create a dictionary. So you can do something as simple as uh, explicitly setting the key value pairs like this. And this is our typical dictionary. Um, there are a few other ways to construct this thing. One favorite is just to do it uh, yourself directly, listing out the uh, data structure right in the code. Right, so that will give us the same thing. Another uh, interesting one is when you're iterating over a list or iterating over something you can zip up I usually do this when I'm, when I'm iterating over something. You can zip up key value pairs. So turn a zip of a dictionary um, or zip, zip these two lists together and then turn that zip uh, into a dictionary. That will also do that for you. So that's three ways right there. Um, you can you can even be more verbose about it. Python will let you do that, even though it seems kind of strange why you would. We can give it a list of key value pairs. So here is uh, a list of tuples that I am passing in with the key value and that will produce the dictionary and then one other one for you is just to explicitly create the data structure and cast it as a dictionary. I don't know why you would do it this way. That seems really verbose to me but we can check that all of these dictionaries that I just created are equivalent, and they are even though, uh, you know, all of their keys are in the same order. So uh, all of these dictionaries are equivalent, and those are all different ways of creating dictionaries. Um, the preferred way, I typically am one to be very verbose when I can and I try to say this is a dictionary and these are the keys and these are the values. If I'm, I also accept this as just standard way of, of creating a dictionary, typically in my programs, uh, and then I zip up key value pairs when I need to. For example, if I'm, if I have two lists and I want to sort of push them together into a dictionary, I will do that as well. Um, I'm much less likely to do the construction where I explicitly say this is a dictionary of the data structure. I'm not sure that seems redundant to me, uh, but perfectly valid. Okay, so one key feature of dictionaries is that they are mutable, so I have no problem resetting keys um, to say that one is equal to two. I have no problem adding uh, new keys to my dictionary because this uh, is very verbose uh, or it, it's very mutable <laughs> um, and flexible for you, which is which is a great thing. At times you need a data structure that can handle something like that. I could say um, the keys, I could check out the keys on my dictionary. Um, I could do things like give me the values. So uh, dictionary.keys will give you the list of keys. Um, 
dot values will give you the values. So if I say uh, 4 in A, uh, it's not there, but 4 is in the dictionary E. Uh, so that is that is true. Uh, so just very versatile data structure. You can do a lot with it, and there are a bunch of uh, different uh, dunder methods you can call. So e contains four. Uh, if I do e dot clear, I believe this will clear the dictionary. So you don't want to do that. I just lost uh, that dictionary. I could do um, f is equal to a dot copy. So f and a are now the same. So if I do a four equal to four, I'm interested here to see what f is. Now, f is not the same thing as uh, a um, because I have this copy here. Uh, so f dot a dot del item dunder dunder del item four. Let's see, and that deleted it. I could also do delete the key. That should work. Uh, I could do a dunder len two items. Uh, you can pop, so if I pop three, um, I'll get the value popped out of there, and then A just contains two uh, as the only key left in that dictionary. So uh, let's see, I have E, I have F, so F dot dunder dunder reversed. Let's see, dict object has no, oh, that's only on an ordered dict, which is something we'll talk about at a different, uh, in a different video. These keys are not ordered. Um, these keys are not, this dictionary is not an ordered dict, so I can't do that. Um, I could also update, so f.update with a sub-dictionary for, I do this fairly often, so now I have that. And finally, for this video, I can do dictionary comprehensions, which are uh, incredibly useful. So if, let's say, I have a list of key value pairs, uh, let's say, Let's say country and then some rank of some kind. Um, sort of just making these up. Just numbers associated with them. Uh, let's say. Just making these up as I go along. So let's see. Oh, okay. I am not setting my tuples uh, correctly. Okay, so let's say I have a list of country codes and some some number. Um, I could create a dictionary from this. I could say this is going to be um, country and then code for. Uh, let's say country code in uh, in list. So let's see. So now I have all of the countries there, uh, their keys and their codes. Um, you can also do things like uh, if code is less than some number. So you could create a dictionary um, based on values uh, in your list or in whatever you're iterating over. So a dictionary is incredibly powerful. Uh, a lot of functionality there. 
they're kind of an essential data structure. And in the next video, we'll have uh, some more fun with dictionaries, so stay tuned.